Hi on MPI brought to you by DigiKey. This week it's in Finian Lady. What is the new product introduction of the week? This week. Okay, this week we're looking at the PSOC C3 series from Infineon. DigiKey actually sent this over and said, check this out. And I was like, oh, this is a kind of an interesting chip. Um, ironically, this morning somebody emailed and said, like, hey, I want something that will let me do like millisecond precision analysis of motors because they were building like a, a lock. A, lock cracker for mm. um uh combination yeah, locks yeah. and they were like oh i want to know like exactly how much current and voltage the motor is using and i was like well we don't really have anything that do that but this chip could this do it and um, to the psoc control series is a and psoc that's actually like what does it stand for programmable system on a chip it's a microcontroller but also has like extras um you know as as I mentioned before, a lot of companies are making chips with um, ARM cores, especially, or RISC-V cores, and they just kind of lay on the extras, right? So you've got like the basics, but then whatever is their um, special sauce is what gets added so that you get to take advantage of the synthesis libraries and the compilers and the tool chains that you know and love for the ARM Cortex, but you get something special that other chips don't. So in this case, um, it's an ARM Cortex M33, uh, as we mentioned last week, this is the ARM V8 process, which is an improvement on the ARM M3, which is like ancient now, and the ARM 4, which is not as ancient, but also a little bit long in the tooth. The M33 basically has better power capability, trust zone, um, uh, and you know, some, some better memory, I think it was better memory management, but, um, or uh, um, matrix management, um, then the, the M4 at the same speeds and um, definitely better efficiency than the M3. So what's added in the PSOC control series is really um, excellent motor control peripherals, um, which we'll go through, but um, very high speed ADC, a thing called the Cordic accelerator, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and I'm trying to think, and then it was the motif um, connector, which uh, a, a module, which lets you um, manage the um, PWM and um, timer capture of encoders. So this comes in two series, the entry line. Um, the entry line basically, I think, has, was it like an eight, six mega samples per second, ADC, 12 bits. Um, and it doesn't have, I think, CAN bus. Uh, and it doesn't have the motif capability, but it does have almost everything else. And then the main line, there's also going to be a performance line, although the performance line hasn't been announced yet. The biggest change I can tell with the performance line is, oh, I think it had like an extra couple timers. Um, it has a 12 mega sample per second ADC. So basically, if you're trying to measure the current and voltage usage of your BLDC motors that are connected to this or your DC motors, You'll be able to do that with like extremely high precision. You don't need an external motor control chip. You can actually kind of do everything on hand. Oh, it's also a little bit faster. Yes, this is the difference. The main line is 180 megahertz Cortex. Um, the C3 is 100. Um, the analog only goes to six mega samples per second on the control three and um, uh, entry and 12 megabit on the main line. Um, the timers are the same. There's um, high resolution PWM on the main line and it's available in 80 pin TQFP, TQFN. So that's like the, the main difference. And like I said, uh, performance line is coming out later in the year. Um, so if you look at it, you know, like I said, it's it's got that basic CPU subsystem. So you're going to have stuff like, you know, I2, I2C, UART, um, you got the FPU and the M33, which is going to be really handy, uh, up to 256K of flash, I think up to 64K, 32K of RAM. I don't remember how much RAM there was in. There's a couple of variants. Um, there's also versions that have CAN bus, and then um, there was, you know, the sleep management, trust zone, PWM, et cetera, um, and then, of course, the extras. So one of the extras, which I thought was kind of neat, is this thing called the Cordic. So a lot of times when you're doing motor stuff, and we've chatted about this when we talk about um, uh, stepper motors in particular, but also, of course, this, this matters when you're doing BLDCs, is 
you often have a lot of sine waves that you're dealing with. You're writing a sine wave to the motor because you want to have this smooth motion or you're reading sine waves or you're you know, whatever, doing trigonometry to you know, try to figure out the intercepts. Um, and even with an FPU, trigonometry calculations are really annoying unless you have a table, but you don't certainly want to have a gigantic table, especially if you're doing like you know, very high speed, this you know, 12 mega samples per second ADC, you want to be able to do the trig almost instantly to determine what angle you've got based on the voltage, right? Or like where you are in the, the sine wave curve. The Cortic uh, processors is, you know, I guess as long as your ARM compiler knows about it, um, it will automatically um, improve the performance of your sine, cosine, arctan, inverse sine, inverse co cosine, inverse arctan, phase square root, and park transform. So um, it'll definitely make your built-in math that you're doing to do um, motor mo motion calculations much, much faster because like those sine and cosines, um, calculations, they have to be done by hand, but not done by hand, but it's like, it's done by approximation. It's not like a single multiply or uh, even a divide on your FPU. Next, um, they've got really killer P uh, PWM. So I remember like, you know, I was talking to Jadir a long time ago, but the, at Mega Series, and they're like, man, there's only like two or three timers. And this really sucks. Um, this one has a 32 bit four channel, and I think like 16 channels of 12 channels of 16 bit, uh, just like a massive amount of PWM um, available, which is going to be really handy because motors love PWM to uh, do control. And of course, uh, you can use it for um, other voltage controlled stuff by putting RC filter on it. And then there's also a uh, thing called the Motif interface. Like I said, this is for the um, high, uh, the main line, you know, rather than the uh, low cost entry line. And the motif is basically what you would connect your Hoff sensor or quadrature encoder as like your mechanical feedback for the motor, not just like the back EMF feedback. And the, the timer, timers are not only output, but of course they're also input capture. Um, it'll handle the input capture for you and it's designed specifically for high-speed motor control. Okay. Next up, there's a lot of variants. Okay, can I make this bigger because I'm gonna read this. So, right, there's, there's like a big combination of different whatever sets. This is actually just the value line. You can get uh, 128 or 256 flash. All the value line versions are six mega samples per second. Some have 12 channels, some have 18 channel. Um, some have the Cortic, some don't. The ones that have Cortic also have motifs. So I guess those are maybe the ones that don't are ones not necessarily for motor control. They have plenty of uh, peripherals and um, some of them also have CAN, which is going to be handy because a lot of times, you know, if you're doing motor control, you're going to also be connected up to a, a robotic subsystem. Um, I like that they're available in the QFN and QFP. Uh, those are my favorite packages. Um, they're compact, easy to solder. Um, so it reduces your uh, manufacturing costume you know, to deal with some, you know, nutty 0.4 millimeter BGA. Get started quickly. There's a couple of the Val boards um, has an Arduino format, kind of shield compatibility, has the debugger built in, has an SWD connector, there's like a trim pot even, and um, a micro bus connector so you can connect accessories to it. And I think I have another uh, picture of it from, yeah, this is from the top. So you can see there's a debug interface and then uh, the chip in the middle, so you can use USB to program it. And it's like only 50 bucks, so I actually kind of recommend getting the eval board um, to get started. Um, there's a CAN connector, and then you can wire up your motor controller. You'll need like, it doesn't have a motor driver built in because you're going to probably want like your H-Bridge or MOSFET driver, whatever that you're using, connect it up separately, but you could just plug that in on um, the shield, all the extra pins that are available. And the chips are in stock. I picked one. Again, there is eval boards and there's tons of variants. But I think if you're making a product that has a motor built in and you don't want to have a separate motor controller because it can be expensive, it can be two or $3. This chip is only a couple bucks and you can do everything all on one chip and you still have your button controller, LCD, potentiometers, I, you know, CAN bus. It kind of like does everything all in one. So it's kind of a good... Um, it doesn't have native USB, but it has kind of everything you need to do your robotics and motor and 
you know, mechanical control and you don't need to have a separate processor. So it's like very compact and easy to use. And again, like that 12 mega sample per second ADC, you're not going to get that anywhere else. I haven't seen anything that can do um, that high quality of analog reads. So if you're feeling like trapped by your microcontroller because you're like, oh, I just can't push that much um, data analysis, um, the Cortic processor, the Motif, and the ADCs in this could be um, a real game changer for you. That's on MPI. Hi on MPI.